Good evening, I'm Darren Mara. The top stories. The British Prime Minister orders a public inquiry into the London Tower Block fire. Reports from the US suggest President Trump is being investigated for obstruction of justice. And the Russian president has appeared on national television accusing the United States of trying to influence his country's elections. British Prime Minister Theresa May has tonight ordered a public inquiry into the London Tower Block fire. The death toll from the fire has risen to at least 17. Sniffer dogs are to be sent in to search for evidence and identification of people still inside. More than 30 people remain in hospital, 17 of them in a critical condition. A blackened ruin on the London skyline. How many dead remain inside still isn't clear. Authorities tonight confirming it could be weeks for the recovery process to be completed. Fire crews still unable to access half the building. Sadly, I can confirm that the number of people that have died is now 17. We do believe that that number will sadly increase. As fire investigators continue to work on the cause of the blaze, Prime Minister Theresa May visited the site to see the devastation firsthand. On the streets nearby, people still wait for news of friends and family they haven't heard from since the blaze began. The number of people reported missing is unclear. It was just terrible. It's horrific. You know, I've got friends in there and uh, they're still on a missing list now. My mum, my sister, her daughters, and her husband. Yeah, they're all still in the building. Well, I don't know if they're out. I don't know because we don't know any information. This video was posted to Facebook from inside one of the flats. Hello, come here. Come here. Hello. Hello. Come, come, come. Quick, quick. He's made the rope from his blankets. Other desperate residents were seen making ropes out of bed sheets. There were remarkable stories of survival. A lady appeared at the window, gesturing, body language, from what she was saying, I'm about to throw my baby, please catch the baby. And the baby, I think, was wrapped in some sort of um, bed sheet uh, blanket, and she threw the baby as the baby came down. And this was about approximately from the ninth or 10th floor. Um, a member of the public, a gentleman, ran forward and miraculously um, helped grab the baby. Throughout the day, trapped residents were still being spotted. What floor are you on? Huh? Seven, yeah? I saw somebody there uh, in a uh, wave in a uh, in, uh, white, uh, in a white shirt. Yeah, white shirt, yeah. He was rescued at noon, 11 hours after the inferno started. Once the building's concrete frame was declared structurally sound, firefighters conducted a floor by floor search. They were hampered for some time by a fractured gas main, which was really difficult and challenging for the utilities to be able to isolate. That obviously, as you can imagine, created quite significant hazard. Grief, but also considerable anger about how a tragedy like this could occur in modern day Britain in a building home to some of society's most vulnerable. During recent refurbishment works, new cladding was placed outside the decades old council housing tower. It's a year old, but that stuff was just going up like, like boom, to a match, you know, it was just, woof, it was just spreading straight away and it was all flying off and people screaming up at their windows, get us out of here, it was horrific. The firm responsible for the renovations insists all relevant standards were met, but questions remain about the lack of alarms and sprinklers. Once uh, the recovery is complete, then an investigation will take place into the cause of the fire and if there are any lessons to be learned. Residents have been told to follow a stay put policy in the event of a fire. If I listen to the advice given to me by the fire brigade and also by the TMO management team, we could be dead. It's the local MP's first week on the job and she wants answers. I'm asking for a full inquiry. So we'll, we'll see what happens. That's, that's in my mind. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot more to, be, to do today. And as I say, priority is looking after people, making sure they know that they're OK, that they're secure and they can sleep somewhere tonight. So many volunteers and helpers. Acts of resilience and faith saw the community pull together in the shadow of a building hundreds called home, but none will ever return to. In London, Ben Lewis, SBS World News. A senior U.S. congressman who was among those shot when a gunman opened fire on Republican politicians is tonight in a critical condition. 
Steve Scalise was playing baseball in Alexandria, Virginia, when shots rang out. President Donald Trump has visited the injured congressman in hospital. Charity baseball practice. Under heavy fire. Gunshots ring out 50 or more as terrified onlookers duck for cover. The team including members of Congress. Hey, is that guy okay out there? House Majority Whip Steve Scalise shot in the hip, now in a critical condition. A congressional staffer, a police officer and a lobbyist also shot, two others injured. Scalise's police security details stepping in until local police arrive. There could have easily been 25 deaths or more today. I think we had 25 team players and about 15 staff. But officers Griner and Bailey prevented that and my family and I will be forever grateful. President Donald Trump visiting Scalise in hospital after receiving immediate surgery. The gunman who was shot dead by police, 66-year-old James Hodgkinson from Illinois. His house being searched for any clues. Law enforcement has reason to believe that the shooter has been in Alexandria, Virginia area since March of this year. We believe that the shooter has been leaving out of his vehicle. I just want to let people know that he wasn't evil, that he was... I guess tired of some of the politics are going on. Posts on social media portraying a deep hate for Republicans, calling President Trump a traitor. A cartoon also critical of Steve Scalise, but showing support for Bernie Sanders. But the alleged shooter at the Republican baseball practice this morning is someone who apparently volunteered on my presidential campaign. I am sickened by this despicable act. On the House floor, calls for unity as politicians pray for the injured. Questions that now about great. whether divisive political debate has gone too far. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. We may have our differences, but we do well in times like these to remember that everyone who serves in our nation's capital is here because, above all, they love our country. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who was wounded in an assassination attempt in 2011, tweeting, this shooting is an attack on all who serve and on all who participate in our democracy. Despite the horror, the charity congressional baseball game will go ahead. Republicans and Democrats both determined not to let this change their way of life. Kirsty Johansson, SBS World News. US President Donald Trump is being investigated for obstruction of justice by special counsel Robert Mueller, according to a report in the Washington Post. Mueller is overseeing the FBI inquiry into Russian meddling in the 2016 US election and any Trump links to it. A short time ago, Mr. Trump tweeted about the development, saying, you're witnessing the single greatest witch hunt in American political history, led by some very bad and conflicted people. If confirmed, it is a Washington Post headline of historic import. President Trump himself, a focus of the Mueller inquiry. This report in the Washington Post this evening um, suggests strongly, given five different sources, uh, that the scope of the investigation has changed since the, fi since the firing of the FBI director uh, and is now targeted directly uh, at the president and his actions, which may amount to obstruction of justice. That's special counsel Robert Mueller on the far left at Capitol Hill today to talk to senators leading the Intelligence Committee inquiry. But it's whom Mueller has requested to interview that's significant. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates, National Security Agency Head Admiral Michael Rogers, and Richard Leggett, former NSA Deputy Director. We know that President Trump called Dan Coates and Mike Rogers on the phone and asked them both to come out and personally say that there was no evidence of collusion between Trump associates and Russian officials during the 2016 presidential election. They did not do that, but uh, the Rogers' former deputy, Richard Leggett, yeah. wrote an internal NSA memo that uh, laid out that, documented that conversation. 
Last week, Coates and Rogers repeatedly declined to answer questions on the matter at a public Senate hearing. Why are you not answering because I feel questions. it is inappropriate, Senator. I, what you feel isn't relevant, Admiral. The following day, James Comey testified that in the Oval Office on February 14, Trump asked him to back off the investigation into fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. I took it as a direction. Trump denies it. I didn't say that. I mean, I will tell you, I didn't say that. Now reported to be of interest to the special counsel, Trump's interaction with Coates and Rogers. A week after Dan Coates was confirmed in his position in late March, he had a meeting with the president. He was in the White House, he had a conversation with the president, and the president said, can you do something uh, to get uh, FBI Director Comey to back off on the investigation of former National Security Director Flynn? Donald Trump's personal lawyer responded in a statement, the FBI leak of information regarding the president is outrageous, inexcusable and illegal. The story breaking on the president's 71st birthday, his wife tweeting to mark the occasion. Pruluan, SBS World News. The Russian president has tonight delivered his annual nationwide television call-in show, accusing the United States of trying to influence his country's elections. Vladimir Putin also claimed that former FBI Director James Comey provided no evidence of Russian meddling in the U.S. election. The Russian television program is a fixture on the country's political calendar, and this is the 15th time Mr. Putin has taken part. He said a new round of U.S. sanctions on his country is evidence of domestic American problems. Mr. Putin said there was an anti-Russian hysteria in the U.S. media and that Washington's policy of imposing sanctions had always been aimed at trying to contain his country. Well, coming up after the break, contentious citizenship legislation introduced in the federal parliament. Doctors and nurses at risk. I've had threats on my life, threats of rape. I'm the only doctor for these five wards. I would just cry for hours. There's a reluctance to discuss doctors' suicides. Then, on Dateline, mums selling their kids for sex. She wants to meet with me so I can have sex with her kids. And the undercover operation to rescue children as young as seven. Insight followed by Dateline, Tuesday from 8.30 on SBS and On Demand. Imagine your personal voyage of discovery aboard Silver Sea Expeditions, the ultimate in adventure cruising. Our small ships provide an intimate atmosphere as they take you closer to the action, all in the lap of luxury. Enjoy a sense of space, elegance and comfort as you witness the world's most breathtaking scenery. All aboard Silver Sea Expeditions. percent less calories than wine. I am unstoppable. I can beat anything. Except pluck. Join Medibank Extras and get 100% back on your annual dental checkup at a member's choice dentist. Join Medibank today. A voi che amate l'armonia. Dedichiamo creazioni di design, bellezza e artigianalità. È la Casa Natuzzi Italia. Italian made living now on sale. Natuzzi Italia, Moor Park, Castle Hill, Alexandria. SBS and Silver Sea Expeditions are giving you the opportunity to win a trip for two on the Silver Cloud Polar Cruise. For your chance to win this luxurious adventure, go to sbs.com.au forward slash food. She's FBI, CIA, and NSA. Believe that Russia hacked the election. Why did Russia hack the election? <laughs> The Putin interviews start Sunday 8.30 on SBS and On Demand. Next time on The Family Law, Danny moves on. I saw Dad kissing a woman. While Jenny stretches out. I think I'm at five. The new season of The Family Law continues next Thursday 8.30 on SBS and On Demand. <laughs> 
The government's contentious citizenship legislation has been introduced to Parliament. It could have implications for some children born here, and not all migrants will need to sit the strict new English test. Deputy Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. Two months after they were announced, bills to shake up citizenship laws hit the House. Australian citizenship is an extraordinary privilege. Along with four years of permanent residency, an Australian values test and an English test, the Immigration Minister revealed more conditions on what it would take to earn citizenship. Children born in Australia to parents here without valid visas won't get it. And on top of police checks for all applicants, migrants will have to prove good character, excluding anyone with a history of... Domestic or family violence, criminality, including female genital mutilation, and involvement in gangs and organised crime. But it's the English language test and the level it's being set at that concerns some in the opposition. This is harder than it is to get into some universities. There will be exemptions for people under 16, over 60, some disabilities, and for those from the UK, Ireland, US, Canada and New Zealand. There are some people, including people who'd be born here if it was ever put to them, uh, who will never be able to pass a test of that nature. It's something that should be welcomed by everyone in this chamber. And yet the opposition has failed to support this principle. The Prime Minister again linking the citizenship changes to national security. The Labor Party, Mr Speaker, has failed to learn from its mistakes. They're divided on the need for strong borders and on the need for an orderly immigration system. What does it mean when you say to a group of people uh, that this will be your home, you'll be here the rest of your life, but you'll never be told you fully belong? The opposition will decide at its caucus next Tuesday what parts of the bill it can and can't support, with some mindful of its links to national security. It's that conversation that's been dominating discussion here in Canberra, but it's landed three Turnbull ministers in hot water. The Court of Appeal in Melbourne has ordered Greg Hunt, Michael Suka and Alan Tudge to explain why they shouldn't be referred for prosecution for publicly criticising two top Victorian judges as soft on terrorists. Commonwealth lawyers will represent them tomorrow. The Greens say the ministers should pay out of their own pockets. Daniela Ritorto, SBS World News. Thousands of people have taken to the streets of Turkey to protest against an opposition lawmaker's prison sentence. Enes Berbaoğlu has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for military espionage. He allegedly gave an opposition newspaper a video purporting to show Turkey's intelligence agency sending weapons into Syria. Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has appeared before a Supreme Court appointed team examining a corruption case linked to the Panama Papers. Mr Sharif is the first head of government in Pakistan to appear before an investigating agency. Last year, leaked documents showed that three of Mr Sharif's children had links with offshore companies that owned properties in London. He denies any wrongdoing. A former diplomat is calling for an investigation into whether North Korea tried to hide the dire medical condition of an imprisoned U.S. student. Otto Wombeer is in a coma and undergoing treatment in Ohio after being released by the North Korean government on humanitarian grounds. In 2016, he'd been sentenced to 15 years hard labor for trying to steal a propaganda poster it's believed he contracted botulism. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Bill Richardson says in the event of a cover-up, Washington needs to respond forcefully. The response could be increased uh, economic sanctions, continued efforts to degrade the North Korean missile development program uh, through cyber, uh, try to get China to increase their pressure, uh, coal exports, oil exports, uh, their trade with North Korea. They've done a little, but they could do a lot more. South Korea says it will continue trying to get six of its nationals released by the government in Pyongyang. The number of people killed in landslides in southeast Bangladesh has risen to 154. The worst affected areas are in and around the cities of Bandarban and Rangamati in the Chittagong region. And at least 11 are also dead in parts of India on the border with Bangladesh. The rain has stopped in this village in the Chittagong Hills, for now at least. But Nilu Akhtar knows more is coming. She's trying to retrieve what she can from under the sludge that's slammed into her home. There is no earth-moving equipment here, little to shift it, just her hands. 
It all happened around two in the morning. I didn't even have the time to take my clothes. What you see me wearing is borrowed from my neighbor. All my household items got washed away and are buried under the soil. Nothing is left. A lot of people died around here. We found a little girl just over there. The disaster zone across southeast Bangladesh is vast, and many parts of it are remote. Most of the victims come from the Rangamati region, a hilly district that is home to poor tribal communities. The landslides came in the early hours of Tuesday morning, after almost two days of heavy rain. Flimsy homes offered little resistance, and many people were buried in their homes as they slept. Our neighbor died in the mudslide. We're now working to move all the mud. There's so much damage here. South Asia is frequently battered by storms, heavy rains, flooding and landslides during monsoon season. But officials say it is worse in Bangladesh because of deforestation and settlements built on hills vulnerable to landslides. The army is bolstering rescue teams, but the armed forces have taken losses too, with four soldiers dead and another missing in landslides. Mud-clogged roads are hampering rescue efforts. This is a main road into part of the Chittagong Hill Track, but for the most part, the equipment needed has yet to reach remote areas. And the job of clearing debris is falling on survivors. Well, just days after President Donald Trump accused Qatar of funding terrorism, the U.S. has sealed a $12 billion trade deal with the Arab nation. Qatar has agreed to purchase dozens of F-15 fighter jets from the U.S. On the same day, two U.S. Navy ships arrived in Doha for joint military training. Qatar remains embroiled in a rift with fellow Gulf Arab states. The Turkish foreign minister is urging countries involved to find a peaceful resolution. Well, coming up, the weather and a victorious Rebel Wilson celebrates a legal win. A lot of Western people don't know much about you. We'd like to know about your background, where you came from. People say Trump is in the Kremlin's pocket. These FBI, CIA, and NSA believe that Russia hacked the election. Why did Russia hack the election? <laughs> the Putin interviews start Sunday, 8.30 on SBS and On Demand. The Nick Scarly Half Yearly Clearance is on now. Save on stylish furniture for your entire home. Limited stock for a limited time. The Nick Scarly Half Yearly Clearance on now. Hurry. Dad, I know you think that everything's all right with me, but it's not. Headspace provides mental health support for young people and their families across Australia. Visit headspace.org.au. Introducing the all-new Toyota CHR. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Get that tax-deductible feeling right now at Officeworks, where everything could be tax-deductible. Print, copy and scan with this reliable HP Envy wireless inkjet multifunction, just $79. Work flexibly with this versatile HP Core i5 laptop, only $697. And grab this HP wireless mouse and keyboard combo for a low $28. With thousands of potential deductions in-store and online, Officeworks is your happy tax place. If you've got the big ideas, Officeworks has the lowest prices. The Nick Scarly Half Yearly Clearance is on now. Save on stylish furniture for your entire home. Limited stock for a limited time. The Nick Scarly Half Yearly Clearance on now. Hurry. Next time on The Family Law, Danny moves on. I saw Dad kissing a woman. While Jenny stretches out. I think I'm at five. The new season of The Family Law continues next Thursday, 8.30 on SBS and On Demand. This year, Australian rider Richie Port will lead the charge and chase the yellow jersey in the world's greatest road race. Back our Aussies in the Tour de France. Start Saturday, 1st of July, live and exclusive on SBS. Well, let's check the finance figures now. When the Australian share market lost ground following two days of solid gains. 
Resource stocks were hit. ANZ was the worst of the banks. Telstra rose, though. Markets in Europe are down in early deals. The Australian dollar rose to a two-month high after better-than-expected jobless numbers. To breaking news now, and at least seven people are reported to have died after a blast at a kindergarten in China. Official news agency Xinhua said the explosion took place in Fengxian County in the eastern province of Jiangsu. It's not known how many children, if any, are among the casualties. The explosion is believed to have happened as children were leaving the school in the afternoon. Australian Hollywood star Rebel Wilson has won her defamation case against Bauer Media. A series of articles in 2015 claimed the actress had lied about her age and other details of her life. After four weeks in court, Rebel Wilson's celebration was in keeping with her claims of a bogan upbringing. I think so. It's very surreal to have to prove your own life in court and prove that it's all true. Mum had to go through your photos in the garage. A jury of six women found a series of articles published by Bauer Media in 2015 had defamed Wilson. Her lawyers claimed the articles made the star out to be a serial liar who set out to mislead the public about her age and upbringing. The jury disagreeing with Bauer Media's defence that the articles were unlikely to cause the actress any harm. The tall poppy syndrome. This happened to me in the worst possible way and it was so hurtful and so disgusting and I didn't deserve it and if they knew me personally they'd know that I've worked so hard for everything that I've ever got. Wilson claimed her reputation was severely damaged leading her to being dismissed from two films and overlooked for future lead roles but she says one of the most upsetting things was that her fans may have believed the lies. Thanks so much for the support. Rebel Wilson smiled and wiped her eyes as the jury read their verdicts agreeing with each count of defamation. The next step will be to determine the amount of damages owed to the Hollywood star by Bauer Media. But speaking outside the court, Miss Wilson says this case was never about money, it was about the truth. To me, what I was hoping was that the jury would do the right thing and send a message to these tabloids and they've done that. So for me, uh, it's, it's over in my mind. The actress now turning her attention to an upcoming role she's hoping to play alongside fellow Australian Liam Hemsworth. When I've been feeling really down um, about the stress of this court case, I've just been thinking about pashing him and how good that's going to be. Next week, the court will hear evidence from a Hollywood director as it determines damages. Abby Dinham, SBS World News. More to the weather now. Into the major centres, partly cloudy in Perth and Adelaide, windy in Melbourne and Canberra, cloudy in Hobart and Sydney, light rain for Brisbane. Looking further afield, light rain in Auckland, partly cloudy skies in Wellington and Christchurch, heavy rain in Samoa and Tahiti. In Southeast Asia, cloudy in Bangkok, thunderstorms in Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, cloudy in Jakarta. Further north, dark and wet in Hanoi and Taipei, cloudy over Beijing, Seoul and Tokyo. Heading west, sunshine in Beirut, Jerusalem and Dubai, rain in Mumbai. Up to Europe, grey skies in London, sunny in Paris, gusty in Rome, rain in Berlin, partly cloudy in Istanbul. Down to Africa, sunny in Dakar and Johannesburg, cloudy in Lagos, rain in Addis Ababa. To South America, thunderstorms in Panama City, showers in Santiago and Caracas, partly cloudy in Rio de Janeiro. And for North America, sunny in Los Angeles, showers in Vancouver, New York and Washington DC. Well, the BBC is joining the morning lineup of international English language news on SBS. BBC News at 6 will be broadcast from 7 a.m. tomorrow, shortly after it airs in Britain. It will screen from Tuesday to Saturday. About 4 million British viewers watch the program nightly. That's the world this Thursday. All tonight's stories are online, and for news around the clock, go to our website. I'm Darren Mara. Good night.